Hey, hi there, Scorpio. Welcome to my weekly predictive reading for March 2020. Cross-watcher energies are interchangeable, and please only take those portions that resonate with you. This is a general reading. Okay, Scorpio, off camera to save time, I've performed a protective blessing. I've meditated over and shuffled these cards just for you. And we will be using a card from the Oracle deck, Ask Your Guides by Sonia Choquette. Your first card, it's the general atmosphere. It's the basis of the matter. This is the situation at hand. The Eight of Cups, Scorpio, water energy. This is the ability to leave something behind in order to go on to new concerns. You are going after your wish because something is missing. This is a shift in life from being involved in doing things with others and now you need some quiet time and a chance to be alone. It's in matters of the heart, someone may be close to losing all hope in a romance, and they may walk away from it. This person has turned their back on eight neatly stacked cups, and they head towards a mountain. They're heading towards higher ground. And the care in which that they collected and placed the cups shows previous concern, but now they're being abandoned. The moon in both its full and waiting quarters looks on, signifying the end of something and the beginning of something new. Lead, indicates leaving that pass behind. It's dreams and visions which are not immediately obvious that make up a valuable part of your feelings. Let them help your consciousness and your powers of discrimination grow. Start searching, but be aware of the card's warning about the kind of restlessness that strides on too hastily, missing the very goal, the cups. It's going with the flow following the flow of energy that not only takes the least effort, but it also achieves the best results. You know what you want, and you won't settle for anything less. What was important is no longer. Your second card, and this is the energy that is crossing over your path. These are your subconscious influences. This can be an obstacle to your forward progress, Number 15 of the Major Arcana in the Rider Waite deck, the Devil. This can represent a Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn. This can be in your chart or be someone else. It could also be in their chart. This has to do with temptation and bondage, limitations, oppression, depression. Could be being chained by greed could be the wrong use of force, bondage to the material, sensation, divorce from understanding, having to face up to your demons. Could be a challenge of repression and of illusions. Could be an oppressive situation that's controlling you or the situation around you. And that would bring illusions of helplessness. Helplessness. It can refer to someone with power over another or overdoing something too much something that you like to do. This is a pleasure-seeking couple. Uh, something that is tempting and that it's because you like it. Uh, it would be overdoing something that you really like. Um, maybe you overeat or something like that. It could have to do with lust and addictions, even anger, being ashamed or jealous or codependent even chained to the need for approval or feeling the need to control others. It's serving what enslaves you. You'll need to place boundaries against users and takers. You could be experiencing restrictions or acting in ways that impede your growth, struggling with or denying addictions or depression, projecting your faults onto others, accepting restrictions of the current situation. This can be a negative relationship with deep denial. This is the trickster. He's detrimental. It could be material things keeping you chained. What is it that's limiting your personal growth? Obsessive or harmful relationships? You'll need to confront your fears about financial security and social and material success. The advice is not to manipulate others to satisfy your needs instead of taking responsibility for yourself. This can be a person that's full of empty or false promises. They never take the blame, and they always blame the victim. 
The Eight of Cups with the Devil is struggling to move on from a bad relationship or an obsession. Your third card. This is how it affects you. These are the external influences that you're consciously aware of. The Ten of Wands, Scorpio. Here's another card. Well, this is fire energy. Another card of an of, of, um, oppression. It's a burden. It's feeling overloaded. It's responsibilities that are wearing you down. These are beginnings and endings. It's a problem that's soon to be solved. They're ambitious burdens. Been working hard. It's, this can be a heart tried by pain. It's fortune and gain and any kind of success. And it's also the oppression of these things. You might be feeling resentful. It's, this is speaks to the importance of persisting in your goals despite these great burdens. It's being weary and determined and overworked, shouldering burdens, taking on too many responsibilities, testing your limits, toughing it out. You might want to keep going because you've come too far to let things drop. And if you don't ask for help, then it's up to you to carry the load. The Eight of Cups with the Ten of Wands is leaving behind burdens, responsibilities. And it can sometimes be make it, making it worse. It's not a good move. Your fourth card, it's the position of the future. It's the outcome, the results. The King of Wands, Scorpio. Fire energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter. Could be in your chart or could be someone else. No. This is a person that's in, in, influential and independent, and they help those that they care about. They're honest and intelligent and fair-minded. This can also refer to a situation which is exactly as it appears, with no hint of deception. It can also mean good fortune is coming your way, perhaps in the form of unexpected help or advice or good news. It could be a promotion or an inheritance. It could be passion, passion for a project. You may be spinning things around in your head, around and around. This, as a person, they can be too hasty or impatient. They get bored with the predictable. They're strong and they have a powerful belief in their self and their achievements. And they would rather lead than follow. They dislike details, and yet they are charming and inspiring. And they know when to take action and how to create harmonious human relationships in the process. And he's, uh, he has a bit of an ego, and he enjoys praise and flattery. The Eight of Cups with the King of Wands is someone able to move past or let go of addictions. It's going after what you want. Your fifth card, it's the bottom of the deck card. The underlying issue. This is what's unseen. It's unseen, it's because it's something that you are consciously aware of, but you're not letting others know about it. Number 20 of the Major Arcana in the Rider Weight deck, Judgment. Scorpio, this is one of your cards. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter. This has to do with a new beginning. It's a spiritual awakening. It's rebirth and release and review. It's a resurrection. It's a major turning point. It's evaluation of past actions and the consequences of those actions. It's being accountable for your actions and its truths revealed. It's mysteries unraveled. It's coming to terms with yourself, a going down to rise up, a very special moment in life. It's a change in life in a very important way. I'm getting goosebumps about this, you guys. It's change in life. It's rising up and seeking new possibilities a second chance, a second lease on life. It's like you've been called. It's your true calling. It's being deeply inspired and uplifted, awakening, reborn, summoned to a higher awareness, being inspired. It's big ideas. It's a new phase, and you're rising above it, uh, it all. It can be getting good news. It's sudden changes and reward and fame and talent and victory. It's awakening to your purpose experiencing a breakthrough and getting that second lease on life. It's leaving the past behind and thinking out of the box. It's uniting in a common goal and rallying others. 
It's an end of an old way of life, a cycle that is finished, and it's time to seek a new direction, to make adjustments that reflect who you truly are. It's a positive card. It symbolizes regeneration and rebirth. After a period of confusion and confinement, you may have felt dead in your old life, and now you have the unique opportunity to enliven yourself and your environment by making the appropriate changes. It is now a time of freedom to be yourself. You're on your way up. The Eight of Cups with the Judgment card is walking away and reflecting. It's entry to a new and better life. It's leaving behind the past to a new major awakening. The Devil with the Ten of Wands is trying to conquer fears. It's a vision that becomes obsession. It's fear of taking control, even though you have the capabilities to do so. It's feeling anxious of the position or status that you have right now. This can also represent a narcissistic personality and someone that may have a temper. The devil with the judgment card is absolute power over something or someone. It can be the end of a relationship and even the payment of, re of debts. The Ten of Wands with the King of Wands is a hard-working business owner. It's a passion that they will not give up on. The Ten of Wands with the Judgment card is a need to release some of the load that's necessary. The King of Wands with the Judgment card represents a very strong past connection. Here's your advice from the Oracle deck. Ask your guides by Sonia Choquette. Scorpio, you've got card number 34, Deprivation, from your Prosperity Guides. Deprivation. Withholding, paranoia, stinginess, and frugality, whether because of sudden change of circumstances or a long-held pattern of lack, you may find yourself feeling overly concerned about your finances and security right now. You might be worrying that there won't be enough to meet your needs, so you're trying to conserve every penny. Your fears may even cause you to unconsciously seek others to reassure you or guarantee your needs in some way. The trouble with allowing these fears to take over is that your insecurity will be felt by others and they will step back, fearful of being used for your security, creating a cycle of even more deprivation. The circle of fear and lack dries up the well of prosperity even further. Happily, your prosperity guides are here to help you reverse this vibration. They inform you that hoarding or withholding in any way goes against the divine flow of the universe, and it's the opposite of what's called for to create prosperity. The universal laws of prosperity state that we receive what we give. The universe does not lack. Lack only exists in our minds. The true source of poverty is an indication that we've disconnected from our divine source, which causes low self-esteem. This is a true source of lack in any area of life, whether it's money or comfort or security or even love. To get back into the flow of things, your prosperity guides urge you to reconnect to the source by being generous in all ways. Any stingy, ten even, any stingy tendencies, even with yourself, only keep you cut off from the divine supply. Reclaim your self-esteem by recognizing that you're a trust fund baby of the universe. Your needs will be met easily if you open your heart to receiving the universe's gifts. Connect to this flow by sharing what you can, a smile, a compliment, your assistance, your time, your prosperity guide's message. Tap into the abundance of the universe by sharing your heart. Thanks, you guys, Scorpio. I hope you stay tuned in by leaving me a comment or a thumbs up, and please subscribe. Now remember, what goes around comes around, so I'm sending you out love and light and blessings. Thanks for watching.